Everybody, welcome back to the Iron and Oak Sawmills. This is your first time here. Welcome. My name's Chuck. And I'm Deb. And we are Iron and Oak Sawmill. To the folks that come out every week, definitely appreciate all your support. And guess what, guys? 27,000 subscribers. We just passed the mark about a day or so ago. Excellent. Thank you guys very much for all of your support. If you're new here, hey, consider driving that number a little higher. Hit that subscribe button. Of course, everybody hit the like button and share it with a friend, okay? Um, today's video, we are going to be quarter sawing a red oak log. This is a long awaited video for a lot of folks have been bugging me. Can you do a quarter sawing video? Can you do a quarter sawing video? Finally, yes, we're gonna do a quarter sawing video. This is what we would consider one of the easiest forms of quarter sawing you can do. Um, quarter sawing is notorious for a lot of waste and a lot of time. But although this method does take more time and does produce a little bit more waste, uh, you do pull more boards out of it than normal and you pull some good quality boards out of it as well. As long as you got a quality log, that's the biggest thing. A couple things to point out and you'll probably hear them later on in the video, I'll mention them again. Quarter sawing a log that's 12 inches, not really worth it. I think the minimum for quarter sawing is a nice, clear, straight, 18 inch and thicker, or it's 18 inch and larger diameter log. It's just below that, it's not really that good. Also, um, you want it that the, the pith is, that it's a fairly even grown tree. The pith is very close to the center. Because with the method we're using, uh, you're gonna see why, okay? But I learned this method a while ago, back probably when I first started looking into buying a sawmill. I think it was a, a video from uh, Timber Green Farms, and you'll probably hear me mention that again later in this video as well. Timber Green Farms uh, taught me this method by watching their video. And I'm gonna share that with you guys, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got a nice red oak log ready for the mill. Let's get milling. Okay, what we got here, guys, is this beautiful, straight, no taper red oak log. Clear, one into the other, eight foot long, 24 inch diameter, and uh, yeah, couldn't ask for a better log. When it comes to cortisone, guys, you wanna use your clearer logs because you don't want knots in the middle of your cortisone grain. Also, pretty much any log under 16, 18 inches, not worth cortisone. Uh, this is a nice, even growth, unfortunately, we do have some stress cracks running on the log, but we can use those to our advantage. In fact, the other end, let me show you what that looks like. It's basically quartered already. <laughs> Thing is, we are not going to quarter this. Okay, I'll take you through step by step as we do this. Okay, we're able to pick these logs up locally. Uh, some folks that had purchased some slabs from us gave us a call said hey I've got uh, some oak trees we cleared out around uh, or where we're going to be putting up a pole barn and uh, I'd like to see if you can make use of them absolutely we can this is one of them here we've got another one over here and there were a few more that came off that site that are over in the log yard right now so but this is our subject for today it's a beautiful red oak log and if you like quarter sawing and you wanted to know how to do it, and you want to do it the easier way, this is it. Okay, one of the most important things you can do with quarter sawing is to level the pith, okay? You've got to level the pith on a quarter sawing log. That way you maintain the quarter saw and grain all the way down the log or all the way down the board. If you do not, the quarter saw is going to start to go away or become less than what it is from one end of the log to the other or one end of the board to the other. So we're at about 12 and a half there. And 12 and a half here. I don't even need to use the roller toe boards, guys. Um, works out really nice okay we have the pith leveled luckily we do not have to do anything with it with the LT35 you can use your roller tow boards in this case since the log is uh, just under eight foot I think you have to be about eight and a half to definitely use the roller tow boards on either end for the LT35 so if we did need to level this we would have to go old school put our can hook under here or use the clamp lift up 
shim it a little bit on this end or that end, whatever you got to do to get that pith centered or leveled. And uh, that is key to doing this, guys. Basically, what we're going to do is start off taking a skim cut off of here just to give us enough to, to set the log down on to keep it steady. And do the same off of this side, okay? You do not want to cut way into here because when you start turning this to cut the boards out of here, you want to keep your growth rings 90 degrees to the face of the board or perpendicular to the face of the board, however you want to look at them. So you have your board coming off this way, your growth rings are this way, okay? What we're gonna do is do that the four sides of the log. We're gonna flatten four sides of the logs, give us four spots to locate off of no matter how we turn this log. And uh, we'll follow that up by splitting the log right down the middle, okay? We'll then take the log, turn it 90 degrees from that split, and uh, yeah, turn it 90 degrees from that split, come down to the center, go up a few boards off the center, so you're still within the uh, 90 degrees and make our first cut and then what we'll do is pull probably in this long four to six nice quarter sawn boards out of the center of that log okay Okay, now that we opened up the first two faces 180 degrees from each other, we turn it 90 degrees to pick up the third side of the third face. Once again, we'll level the pith, making sure the pith is the same distance off the bed rails on each end. We'll square it up, and you'll see Deb take the square from me shortly. She'll place it on the mill bed and up against the log to make sure it's, uh, that the cut is square to the mill bed. Don't trust your stops, guys. Stops can move and uh, you'll think you're square and you won't be. Okay, once we have this squared up, we'll go ahead and open our third and fourth face and we'll go from there.
Okay, as you can see right now, guys, man, this sun's a low in the sky right now. <laughs> as you can see, we've got it lined up to go right down the middle. Now, because we leveled the pith, when we come out the other end, that blade should be right there in the center of that log, right at the pith. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut this in half, turn it up on end, keeping it together, and we'll make our next step from there. Okay, you saw us slice it down the middle. We turned it up on end. I brought the blade down to the pith and then measured up three four quarter boards because that's what we're slicing the set, four quarters. And uh, we should be able to slice one, two, three to the pith and one, two, three on the other side and then we'll have to make adjustments after that. So what we'll do is cut this. The top two will go off. We'll process those out in another way and then we'll get our six cuts or six boards, one on each side, three cuts. You see one, two, three, four, five, six, so it'll be 12 boards, quarter sawn. And then we could process a little bit more out of these two halves and the other two halves. And uh, we'll go from there. Check it out, definite ray fleck here. So we've got a board outside of that knot. About five inches. So, I mean, there's even more down here. So you don't want to just arbitrarily trim all this off because there are still some good pieces in here. And this ray fleck's only going to get better, guys. All right, let's get in where it's a little bit better, a little bit more ray fleck, and uh, go from there. The man, yeah, the ray's a little bit better in this half. And again, this is closer to the outside of the log. As you can see, the sapwood here, that's where you're picking up your best quarter song. I don't know if some water would help bring that up or not. I don't know if I want to toss some water, but you can see, definite. 
These are the medullary rays or ray fleck or tiger oak. Some people call this tiger oak. But it's officially known as quarter sawn lumber. And you can quarter saw any log. And quarter sawn lumber is supposed to be the most stable um, because of the way the grain runs. If you look at the end here, you can see quarter sawn when the growth rings are 90 degrees to the face. As you can get closer to the center, like I said, toward the juvenile wood, the rays, or the, they start to uh, bend a little bit there. They're just, they're just out of 90 degrees. This piece right here, outside here, probably six inch board all the way down, quarter sawn, beautiful stuff. But look at that ray flat, guys. Do we have any water? I gotta splash one of these. I'm gonna splash some of the better ones, I think. Are you seeing that? But what happens with this is it almost, it takes on almost a three dimensional look when it's sanded and finished. And you can actually feel the ripples there from the quarter song or from the ray fleck. I'm gonna try to keep this to a minimum, guys. All right, well, that wasn't exactly a minimum. <laughs> I think that popped the grain a little bit more. Let me get up here where I can see better. There we go. Check out the ray fleck, guys. And lots of it in these boards. Trim it off the inside. Got yourself an 8 inch wide, quarter sawn, red oak board. Beautiful stuff. Like I said, this is the easiest way so far that I've learned to quarter saw. I picked this up a couple years ago watching oh god i can't remember i think it was a video by timber green farms i don't know if it's still on youtube or not it was so long ago they were quarter sawing i think they were quarter sawing oak white oak or red oak i can't remember and uh they used this method and they also quarter sawed a cherry log as well i believe in that same video but i'm not going to take credit for this method that's where i learned it he may have learned it from someone else or somewhere else but uh timber green farms he might still be on. I'm not 100% sure. Well, that's going to wrap this one up for today. Um, running out of daylight. We're going to continue on with how we're going to process these two and the ones, that, the two that came off the top. Uh, to try to pull a few more quarter saw boards out, but I think we probably got, let me see, that's six inch, six and a half inch here. One, two, Three, four, probably eight more boards of quarter sawn lumber out of these. Probably do is lay them down on the deck, cut them from the bottom up. Let's see how that goes tomorrow. <laughs> All right, wrapping up the last of the quarter sawing bit here. These are the two that were on the bottom. That was what was left, and we were running out of the 90 degree face. So we turn them up here. We're back on 90 degree face. I'll probably be able to cut two slices out of this and then that'll be it. I think we're going to be done after that. There's, uh, I maybe if I can find a way to get it turned slightly this way and slice down through it, but I don't know. Yeah, one or two cuts and that'll be it. So, but you can see there's a nice ray fleck up here sun's catching that it's on both of them but this one really sticks out a lot and then we'll have the same ray fleck on those as well what we did when we brought these up because they do react when you cut when you split that can or you split that log in half and then you cut these big pieces off they do react they do flex so i went all four sides flat flattened them out again because they were all they were curved in one way or another now they're flat now they're squared up and they should cut nice so let's go ahead. I'm going to get two passes here, and then I'm pretty much going to be done with this can, with these cans.
that's a nice there you go that's a nice quarter sawn right there all right still got some nice quarter sawn grain on that going up but into i think the that's sun. about it i'm just taking a shot at getting a board out of here okay we've decided to get a little more elaborate with these last four pieces um what we're working on is getting the growth rings 90 degrees to the saw blade it's a little tough to do because the piece is essentially a triangle so you lay it up there get the growth rings 90 degrees to the saw blade create four flat sides again and the saw boards out of that and they're going to be some really nice quarter saw and boards stay tuned and check them out right there small one I think it's going to get too narrow. All right, guys, <laughs> you can see what got, what kind of work that takes. And you can see why quarter sawn lumber is so expensive. But when it comes to quarter sawn oak, this is why. Just pulling these two boards out here. These are about five inches wide. It's a beautiful quarter sawn grain. You got the medullary rays. Heavy in these cuts here. Probably two of the best boards we've seen off of this. But with the hydraulic clamp, it gives you a break to get a, uh, to get these things clamped in place. Now I could show you the rest of these. There's, I'll process the, the other three out exactly the same way. And uh, pull those kind of pull the rest of the quarter saw out that we can. And uh, that's probably the least amount of waste. This one turned out pretty well. And I'm really happy with it. Could have had a little fewer knots in it. But uh, it is what it is. Not every log can be perfect inside.
last of it, guys. We processed every little bit of this we could. And I think it was well worth it. Look at the size of the rake like in these. Even these two smaller ones. These are only about three and a half inches wide. Minus a little bit of sap wood there. But a lot of nice quarter saw in here, guys. This is why quarter sawing costs a bit extra. Processing time, a lot more handling, a lot more sawing, a lot more trimming. And uh, in this case, not a whole lot of waste, but I mean, that's all out of this log. That's not everything we got out of this log, right? Nope. We have the 10 pieces we cut prior to this, and then we process these two. And I'll tell you what, like I said, the outer parts of the log have the best quarter sawn, and processing these out like we did, pulled a lot of good quarter sawn boards up there. Narrower, yes, but excellent grain patterns. So we're gonna go ahead and get this stacked up, stickered, and covered. Everybody, that'll wrap it up here at the Iron Oak Sawmill. Again, a lot of great quarter saw and lumber out of that log. We are very happy with the results on that one. Hopefully, you guys learned something. A very simple way of quarter sawing until you got to the end. Those last few pieces where we really canted them on the mill, where we had to cut them a little weird. But uh, that was a way to pull out the last of the quarter sawing out of that log. If you guys don't want to do that, if you want to pull those initial boards out, take those four cans and just slice them through. Whenever you get out of them, you get out of them. That's fine too. That's how I've seen those done before. And uh, that way you get a good mix of quarter sawn, plain sawn, maybe a little rift sawn in there, but a nice mixture of, of cuts. But we went for all quarter sawn out of that log and it worked out nice. Quality, quality of the log really matters. Just gotta remember that guys. Don't get the ones that are off center pith and crooked and knots and everything else. You could quarter saw any log you want to, but is it really worth it if you're if you're not turning out quality lumber? So a shout out to Timber Green Farms. I don't know if their channel's even going anymore. I haven't looked at it or haven't looked for it in a while, but that's where I learned that uh, easy quarter sawing method and it works for us. Hopefully you guys will use it and it'll work for you, okay? A few things before we close this one down. By the time you guys see this video, we will be, uh, I don't know, elbow deep in Scheibe, Firewood at the Furnace, and Darren Woodruff, We'll be here, um, this is Thursday. They'll be here Saturday. And by, like I said, by the time you guys get this video, we will be elbow deep in them guys over here. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Video, I'm sure you're gonna get videos from all of us yeah. um, on that one. So check out their channels as well. Woodruff Woods, Darren Woodruff over there at Woodruff Woods. We've got Brad, Firewood at the Furnace down there in Maryland and Shibe with at, uh, outside with Shibe. You saw him plenty of times on our channel. It's where we got the dually. Great guy. Check out his channel as well. Um, ready? Gonna yeah. wrap this one up. So if you have any questions about what we're doing here at the mill with the quarter sawing, the sawmill, the tractor, anything, please put it down in the comments section. Be glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out, and we'll see you at our next time. And take care. Mm -hmm.